Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple coming back at you again with another video in my extremely basic beginner's painting tutorial. Um, just to kind of refresh where we're at, we started off by talking about how to undo painting um, if you're not happy with it, with the LA's Totally Awesome. And we moved on to talking about um, how I base these miniatures and how to prime them, which means that we're finally ready to actually paint them, which, um, to be honest, for this particular process is, is actually kind of the quickest part of the whole thing. Um, because, you know, as I've said many times, we're not really paint is a loaded term in this case. What we're doing is applying quick shade over the primer to bring out the fine detail. Um, and so you can see, I've been making some progress on this. Um, here, for example, is an abomination. Let me see where my camera is here. Here's an abomination that I've been working on. I've worked on a number of, of A-bombs. Get some a little bit better lighting there. This is, I just did this like an hour ago, so. It is very much still drying. Got some runners. Not getting a good focus there. There we go. And I've actually also done the um, zombie shooters. So I primed these guys in Death Guard Green from Citadel. And again, there's, you do not need to use the expensive Citadel primers. I just am using them because I like them. Um, but probably any $3 can of green paint is going to serve you just as well. Um, and so, yeah, so we've made a lot of progress. And now I wanted to show you what I'm doing and, and kind of how I'm doing it. So let me just make sure that the camera... I'm getting what I need to get in the frame. Yep. Okay. So what I'm using is Army Painter Dark Tone Quick Shade. Um, this stuff is also pretty pricey. You know, it's $25 for a can of this. I don't consider it pricey in the grand scope of like painting a hundred miniatures like this. Um, but there are probably also much cheaper alternatives to this, you know, even like a standard kind of polyurethane. Um, but you might have to get into thinning it down or finding a particular coat. And if you really want just like the easiest possible way of doing this, um, the way that I've chosen is to pick up that quick shade. And what I did was I just dumped a little bit. I bought a bunch of these resealable small um, little plastic, plastic bins off of eBay, Port, they're portion cups, um, for food usually, and, um, and this just allows me to get a little bit of that stuff out of the can without having to constantly go back into the can, I'm much less likely to spill this, and if I do spill it, I'm much less likely to, to, to have, like, a true disaster on my hands, because it's a very small amount of it, um, and, I've already kind of shaken this, stirred this up, shaken this up. And in terms of applying it, it's actually really simple. You just get yourself a kind of really any brush. This is just like a Hobby Lobby painter's brush. You can see that it's a, the size eight. If you can see that, I don't know. Um, so, you know, just kind of a broad bristle on it. This is not like, you know, an expensive brush. This came in a set of eight for like $5 or something like that. Um, and you don't really want to use an expensive brush necessarily because the quick shade, you know, it's, um, it's very, very thick and it, it will mess up your brush to counteract that. We clean it using odorless mineral spirits. And so what I've done is I put a little bit of that into another little, 
Tupperware. And when I want to clean it, I just kind of swirl it around in there, splash it off in some water, wipe it down, swirl it around, you know, just to get, because really you just, you don't want it all gummed up, you know, like, um, like this brush, which I use for basing sometimes. You can see that this is not even a brush anymore. This is just a stick. It's just fused at the end there. Um, you want to still be able to move the paint around. And so all you're going to do, you don't want too much of this stuff. The biggest mistake, the easiest mistake you can make is to take too much of this onto a single miniature. Um, so I really want to make sure that you can see this. So I'm going to dip the brush in about halfway, and then I'm going to brush it off on the sides until it's kind of not you know, super kind of crudded up. And then you just take this and you just, this is it. Just slap it on and move it around and get it into every possible crack and crevice on the miniature. So you can see there is no grand secret technique to this. There's no, there's really no skill involved it's really just more persistence because you know there are so many miniatures but i will say that that even that batch of runners and a bombs that only took me about a half hour to do all of those using this method um through a normal painting method it would probably take me at least at least four hours just to paint a single abomination and that's if it went well you know if i didn't if I didn't encounter any issues, which I almost always do. Um, and so you just want to be looking here. You want to just make sure that it's not pooling anywhere that you don't want it to pool. Like maybe right here. I kind of don't necessarily need a big glob of it in that crevice there. Um, and you can just soak it up with the broad side of the brush, basically. And then you can even, you know, like kind of wipe the brush down to get a little bit of off and then just keep kind of moving it around and just just to make sure that you get it into every everywhere you want it which is the whole miniature basically with this technique at least soak it up move it down move it around flip it down flip it upside down just get at it and that's pretty much it Really no big secret to it. Just don't let it pull up too much in any one space. Even if it does, it's really not going to, it's not going to end up looking bad, you know, um, especially because you're going to be putting varnish over these, matte varnish over them, and that's going to knock down the darkness of it to some extent. Um, and then you just keep moving. Just get a little bit on your brush, clear off the excess, and just, you know, I like to start off with just really broad, just to kind of get it onto as much as the, of the miniature as possible, and then I spend some time spreading it around. So I'll usually splash some from that first, straight from the pot, um, on the front and the back. And you know, if you, if you wanted it darker, or if you did want to pull it up, and if you like the look of that, um, there's nothing wrong with that, and, and all you would need to do is just get more of it onto your brush, basically, or go back to the you know, well, and put a second coat on or something. But I'm happy to have them just come out in this kind of grayish color with with um, the dark recesses, so. And even this is probably overkill. You really don't even need to hit it this hard, but. And then you just keep moving. And so you can see how this could take a project that could take days and knock it down to hours. Um, 
is it as good as is it going to look as good as a fully professionally detail painted set of zombicide miniatures no god no but it's not going to take you two months to do it either um and it's not going to cost you a fortune in miniature paints you know if you buy into the citadel line or the army painter line it's not an inconsiderable cost constantly kind of going back to the store to get more or to get a different color you got the wrong shade of you know red for the sash on the guy or whatever um with this it's just uh it's exactly what i was looking for i'm really i'm actually really happy with how it worked out i don't know again i don't know if anybody else will ever want to paint their miniatures like this i don't know if this provides any value to any of you but i'm really happy because i have been searching for a, a, a repeatable process of painting like a step beyond just a basic primer and something that would bring out the details and and honestly when I bought this quick shade initially I was actually really disappointed because I, I couldn't think of a use for it um, I had just heard good things people love it and I tried it on a couple of miniatures and didn't like the way it turned out and so I was thinking that I had wasted, you know, like $50 because I bought two different shades of it. Um, they have one that's... This one is more analogous to, like, a Nuln oil um, from Games Workshop, which is their kind of dark wash that you put on, like, metallics and stuff like that. And then they have one that's lighter, more of a brownish hue that is similar to... Um, Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade is like another, like, damn near a hack. And Nuln, too, like, both of those are so valuable for dirtying, kind of adding texture and, and getting into the recesses and pulling out detail. And you could do this same process with Nuln or, or Agrax. The problem with those is that they tend to pool much more on the flat surfaces, I find. Um, and that does start to look weird if you're just splashing it around and you're not super careful about it. So if you were going to do this with like a wash or I experimented with Citadel contrast paints as well. Um, you, ha you just have to you have to thin them down like aggressively, like four to one or more is what I found. Um which isn't, you know, necessarily a problem, but, and I'd be happy to do that if I hadn't come, if I hadn't settled on the, the, um, the quick shade over this gray sear. And so we just keep going. I'll show you a couple more walkers and then I'll show you something bigger where you will have to, you pretty much will have to go back to the pot multiple times. And like I had said, man, this just this couldn't be any easier, right? I mean, you could teach a kid to do this, honestly. Safety first, obviously. I'm not wearing my gloves right now. I should be because, you know, I don't want to get this this um, varnish all over my hands necessarily. Just do this in a ventilated area because it is going to stink it up. I'm in my basement, but I have the window open. Um Don't worry too much about not getting it on the base because we'll look at that next, what we're going to do there. And just make sure it's not, like I said, globbed on there too crazily. Just spread it around a little bit. You're good. Just keep going. Let's do this guy with the sign. I'm interested to see how this, the lettering on this sign turns out. If it's a bigger miniature, you know, you will, you may have to, depending on how much you get on your brush initially, you may have to go back to the pot and get a little bit more. I found that with the fatties um, and with, obviously, with the with the abominations, um, just because of the size of the miniature, the same amount of um, varnish won't cover 
you know, one of those larger miniatures. Or even this guy is a little lighter than some of his comrades, maybe because he's a little chunkier. Um, but yeah, just pulling out, get it on the, get it on the wording there on his, on his um, sign. And once this is dried, you're going to be able to, you're probably going to be able to read that pretty easily. You can read, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's see, which A-bomb is it? Yeah, you may be able to read this. Um, you may not because it is super shiny right now, but let's see. He's got some wording on him. See, there's a sign there that says help on this. Bye. It's the kind of thing that just wouldn't... It'd be, it, it'd be a little harder to see on just in uh, one of the unpainted miniatures totally untouched out of the box um at least for me i don't know maybe it's not maybe it's not a problem for other people i don't know i have particularly bad eyesight so so you know i'll be down here and if i was if i wasn't taping this you know you just throw something on the tablet or listen to i'm listening i'm going back through the Horus Heresy audiobooks from Warhammer, which I discovered a few years ago on Audible and kind of became obsessed with. I've never actually played Warhammer, and I don't think I ever will, um, but the lore is pretty dope. Super dark. Super dark. Like, even the, even the Imperium, the good guys are... Not averse to, you know, like, virus bombing an entire planet and just wiping it off the face of the Earth. Um, if that's what they think they need to do to get it done. So, but very kind of operatic and, and grand and kind of, um, you know, it kind of makes everything else look... Like, the scale of it is just so ludicrously huge that... You go back and even look at something like Star Wars and you're just like, oh, I don't know, like, really? This is cool and all, but these guys aren't nine feet tall, <laughs> you know, weighing 600 pounds with, you know, this fun, incredible fucking uh, armor, you know, ceramite armor and bolt guns the size of cannons, <laughs> you know, in, in a normal human's hands and... So the, everything is just scaled up and jacked to the nines in Warhammer, and so I, I really enjoy those books. They're not all not all the Horus Heresy books are great, and I haven't read a lot of them because I've heard that they weren't that great. But the first five in particular, so that would be, um, that would be Horus Rising. just read it not too long ago um galaxy at war and then the one that i'm listening to right now is flight of the eisenstein um and those are the first four or five books in particular are really good and give you a really good like introduction to the 40k universe even though technically the Horus Heresy takes place in the 31st millennium. So it's actually 30K. So that's the walkers. And then to do a bigger figure, like, uh, let's go with the, <laughs> I think this guy is called the actual cannibal, <laughs> which I love. So he's not actually a zombie. He's just a psychopath <laughs> who just wants to eat people. Um, I love that. Same exact technique, but likely going to need a second go at the pot. Although maybe not. This guy's considerably smaller than some of the other abominations. And this guy is the kind of guy that in particular, because of the musculature on him, this is going to look bitchin' with this shade on. 
because it's going to pull in all of the recesses of the mu of the musculature and define everything. Um, the fact that he's naked and that he's jacked is going to end up looking really, really cool. And so, you know, that's my, that's, that's how I'm going to paint my entire Zamba side set, basically. In terms of differentiation, I am going to spray the, um, the, the soldiers, as you saw, I sprayed a different color, um, for the undercoat with the primer so that they're easily identifiable. And I will do the same thing with the daily zombie spawn zombies. My plan is not to use those guys until I can print out cards for them, though. On Board Game Geek, there are users who have created um, spawn cards for them that contain the like information about them. Because otherwise, the way that those zombies work is they come with a little PDF, a little document that you have to uh, look at to tell what their kind of special ability is. Or what makes them unique and uh, that just sounds a little kind of tedious so somebody went through and, and t pulled the information from that document and put it onto you know standard size spawn cards so that you can just mix it into your deck um, and that sounds really cool and so I am definitely gonna print those off um, and depending on how I depending on the format of the files that they give me I'll either print them just at like FedEx or something like that on just like a heavy cardstock and cut them or have them cut them myself or I will go to a site like Printer Studio or something and have them actually professionally printed as cards. Um, and those have turned out really nice in the past. I've done that for Warhammer Quest um, because I, I actually owned the original Warhammer Quest from 1995. And I had some additional cards printed up, um, event cards. So, and and they turned out really nice. Um, so there's your actual cannibal, and you know you can just see it already. It'll darken in those recesses and look really cool. So that's it for my step four, I believe, of my painting tutorial on uh, the lazy, easy, beginner's way to paint Zombicide 2nd Edition. Um, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or ideas for things I could have done differently. Um, always looking for feedback. Not, uh, I'm not um, thin-skinned about that stuff. So um, just let me know what you think, and I will see you next time when we'll be doing the bases.